Hello again, everyone. My name is Louis Ruggiero. Welcome to the King Messiah Project. This is part seven of a ten-part series titled Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, a series dedicated to explaining to the Jewish people why so many believe that Yeshua is the prophesied Messiah foretold in the Hebrew Scriptures. The topic of this session is Isaiah 9-6, which reads as follows. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, who is this child? Well, believers in Yeshua take the position that this is a messianic prophecy about him. The rabbinic community, however, has an entirely different view. Before I share with you what they teach about this verse, which is Isaiah 9, 5 in their Bibles, this is how some Jewish Bibles believe how it should be read. For a child is born unto us, a son is given unto us, and the government is upon his shoulder, and his name is called Peleoetz El Gibor Abiyad Sar Shalom. Now, according to MessiahTruth.com, a counter-missionary website dedicated to defending Jewish teachings and discrediting Yeshua their Messiah, this is the rabbinic interpretation of this verse. According to the Jewish perspective, Isaiah chapter 9 verses 5 through 6 is not a messianic prophecy. The correct context of this passage is that it describes events that had already taken place in Jewish history, namely events concerning the birth of this child, believed to be Hezekiah, the son of King Ahaz, and a prophecy concerning his future as king of Judah. Hezekiah's role was to lift Judah from the degenerate conditions into which it had sunk, and he would lead the indestructible faithful remnant of Israel. This passage speaks of the wonders performed by God for Hezekiah as king of Judah, and in it, the prophet expresses his praise of God for sparing Hezekiah and his kingdom from demise at the hands of Sennacherib, who besieged Jerusalem. Now this needs to be addressed first. The scriptures teach that this child cannot be Hezekiah, and for the following reasons. First of all, in the Hebrew, these are the names of the child. Peleoetz, El Gibor, Abiyad, Sar Shalom. Sar Shalom translates Prince of Peace. Now, anyone or any group claiming that King Hezekiah is rightfully called Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace, has not taken the rest of the Bible into consideration. For example, regarding this piece, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 7, the following verse tells us that, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. I need to remind my Jewish friends over at the MessiahTruth.com website and at all other counter-missionary websites and everyone else embracing rabbinic Judaism's position here that there was war during Hezekiah's lifetime. The clear biblical evidence of this is provided in 2 Kings chapter 18. I'll pick up in verse 1. This is what it says. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea son of Elah king of Israel, that Hezekiah the son of Ahaz king of Judah began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abi, the daughter of Zechariah. Verse 8 goes on to say that he smote the Philistines, even unto Gaza. And in verse 13 it says, now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them. So there was war during Hezekiah's lifetime. And who can doubt that there has been war and rumors of war just about every day since his death approximately 2,700 years ago? As a result, how can anyone or any group believe or furthermore teach to others that Hezekiah was the fulfillment of Isaiah 9.5 or Isaiah 9.6, depending on which translation you're reading? When the following verse says that, of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Hezekiah cannot be the Prince of Peace, the Tsar Shalom. Now I know what the counter-missionary response is going to be. They will say that Yeshua didn't bring everlasting peace either. I'll respond to that in two ways. First, the question being addressed here is whether Hezekiah is the subject of this text. The clear biblical response to that question is an emphatic no. And secondly, believers in Yeshua believe what the Hebrew Scriptures teach, that he would come twice. According to Zechariah 9.9, his first appearance takes place when he comes lowly, riding on a donkey. Here's the verse. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. 
Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly, and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. Now Matthew chapter 21, verses 1 through 8 tells us that Yeshua already fulfilled that prophecy. And when he returns, he will come with the clouds of heaven in fulfillment of Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, which reads, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven, and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. Now here's an interesting question posed by the folks over at the MessiahTruth.com website. They wrote this, There is also an interesting point to ponder about attributing the name, title, Aviad, which the KJV renders as the everlasting father to Jesus. According to the New Testament and, therefore, in Christianity, Jesus is the only begotten Son of God, which naturally means that God is the Father. How, then, can the everlasting Father also be a reference to the Son? Interesting question. Well, let's go to the board. Here's my response. Abiyad is more properly translated Father of Eternity. In other words, he, the son and child prophesied in this text, Yeshua, the Messiah, the Moshiach, begat time. He created time. He is just as eternal as his father, having no beginning. As proof, this is how this verse is translated in Young's literal translation of the Bible, which reads, For a child hath been born to us, a son hath been given to us, and the princely power is on his shoulder, and he doth call his name Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Father of Eternity, Prince of Peace. Now I'd like to ask those over at MessiahTruth.com or anyone else agreeing with them a couple of my own questions. The first is this. Even though Hezekiah cannot possibly be the Prince of Peace, according to Isaiah 9.6 in your Bible and Isaiah 9.7 in Christian Bibles, this child, who is Hezekiah according to you, will execute justice forever. Here's the verse. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 7 reads, Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. Now, since you believe that this child is Hezekiah, where in the Bible does it say that King Hezekiah executed justice from henceforth even forever? Can you show me anywhere in Scripture where Hezekiah fulfilled this portion of the text? Now, I can certainly show where the Messiah would execute justice. It's right here in Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 5 through 6, which reads, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, that's the Messiah, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name, whereby he shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. Here's my second question. Once again, here's the name of the child. Peleoetz El Gibor Abiyad Sar Shalom. Now, since Peleoetz translates wondrous or wonderful counselor, how can Hezekiah be considered a wonderful counselor when, according to Isaiah chapter 39, he revealed all the treasures in the temple to the king of Babylon? And because he did this, this is how the Lord punished Hezekiah. In Isaiah chapter 39, verses 5 through 7, he said, Hear the word of the Lord of hosts. Behold, the days come that all that is in thine house, and that which thy fathers have laid up in store until this day, shall be carried to Babylon. Nothing shall be left, saith the Lord. And of thy sons that shall issue from thee, which thou shalt beget, shall they take away, and they shall be eunuchs in the palace of the king of Babylon. It doesn't sound like God was too pleased with King Hezekiah's display of foolishness, does it? Most importantly, it doesn't sound like Hezekiah qualifies as a wonderful counselor either. But I can show you biblical evidence where the Messiah is a wonderful counselor. It's right here in Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 through 2. This is what it says. And there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and the branch shall grow out of his roots. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Who can doubt that the Messiah is a wonderful counselor? Now here's another matter that needs to be addressed. According to MessiahTruth.com, 
there is a consensus that the verbs in Isaiah 9, 5, or 6, whichever translation you're reading, whether it be a Jewish translation or a Christian translation, should be conjugated in the past tense, even though there are Jewish translations that translate this passage in the present tense, such as the Sensino translation and the 1917 Jewish Publication Society Bible translation. They insist that this verse should be properly translated in the past tense as follows. For unto us a child has been born, unto us a son has been given, and his name shall be called, etc. This is how they try to qualify Hezekiah, who was already born when this was written, as the subject of the text. Well, guess what? Believers in Yeshua should have no problem with this verse being understood in the past tense either. And I'll explain why throughout the remainder of my time. Let's go back one verse and read Isaiah chapter 9 verses 5 through 7 in context. Now I'll be reading from the King James Version. Isaiah 9 5 reads, For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Now where else can we find a battle won with burning and fuel of fire in scripture? The answer in Zechariah chapter 14 which reads as follows. I'll pick up in verse 1. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives. Here it is in verse 12. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet, and their eyes shall consume away in their holes, and their tongues shall consume away in their mouth. This is a cross reference to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 5, prophesying of a battle one with burning and fuel of fire, a prophecy of Yeshua's second coming. Here's another passage confirming this. Psalm chapter 97, verses 1 through 3. The Lord reigneth, let the earth rejoice, let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goeth before him, and burneth up his enemies round about. Verse 5 says, The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord, at the presence of the Lord of the whole earth. Remember, this has not yet come to pass. This is a future event. Now let's go back and read Isaiah 9.5 the way MessiahTruth.com wants us to read it. For unto us a child has been born, unto us a son has been given, and his name shall be called, etc. This is Israel's declaration of who their Messiah is at his second coming. Their Messiah has been born 2,000 years ago in Bethlehem. When his feet stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, according to Zechariah 14, verse 4, and they look upon him who was pierced, according to Zechariah 12, 10, they shall call him Peleoetz, Wonderful Counselor, El Gibor, the Mighty God, Aviad, Father of Eternity, and Sar Shalom, Prince of Peace. And finally, the next verse, Isaiah 9, verse 7 states, Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, to order it, and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. This is the Messiah's reign. So unlike Hezekiah, who failed fulfilling the Isaiah 9, 5-7 prophecy, it will be King Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, who will fulfill it at his second coming. Coming up next, Psalm 2-7, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Is this about King David, as rabbinic Judaism would have us believe, or is it about Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah? Until then, on behalf of the King Messiah Project, this is Louis Ruggiero saying, God bless you all, and we'll see you soon.